What's up? My name is Gabe Miller, and welcome to my ultimate Novation Circuit Rhythm tutorial. If you are completely new to the circuit or are a returning circuit user learning the rhythm for the first time, I've got you covered. I'm going to teach you how to make your first beat on this thing, how to navigate the interface, and deal with some of its more advanced features as well. I'm going to do a dedicated video next week on how to load sounds onto your circuit rhythm. So, all that being said, let's jump into it. To start things off, I'm going to make sure I have a blank project pulled up. So any of these grayed out ones. And now I've got uh, easy access to any of my tracks and I can select which sounds are on which track. I'm using my $5 sample pack formatted for the rhythm and I've got a bunch of kicks, snares, hi-hats, so on and so forth laid out like that. And you'll notice as I scroll through these using the arrow buttons, these will light up to show which part of the pack you're in, which is super nice. So if you are kind of familiar with how the pack is laid out, you'll be able to very easily go in and select a sound. And to select a sound, you just select it, it'll play it, and now that sound is selected for that track. So I can select a kick for this track. For track two, I want a snare, and I can go through that and select sounds for each of my tracks. Let me get a hi-hat in here. Just a standard hi-hat, and then a different hi-hat for this one. And for this next track, let's get a bass. And finally, on track six, some kind of lead. Of course, you don't have to select all your samples right from the beginning. You can do that at any time or change them at any time. I just wanted to get this kind of set up for us to dive into making a beat. Real quick, I want to save my project before I get too far. I'm going to double tap the save button, or I can go to projects and select a slot to save it into. Let's go back to my tracks. And now there are a few different ways that I can actually play these samples that I selected. First of all, I can get to drum pads. So I'm gonna hit shift, hit this button to get to drum pads. That feels pretty similar to working on something like a native instruments machine, especially since I can still dive into the individual tracks and change stuff about the samples, including mapping them out to a keyboard. So let me jump into my lead track. And if I hit note, it pulls up a keyboard layout. And this is just a chromatic keyboard layout. If you hit note again or hit shift and then note, it will pull up another octave for you to work with. That's the case for any of the little text or the text above a button. If you hit shift, it'll get to that. Or in the case of these with the little uh, subtext, you can also get to stuff by double tapping. But let me go back to sample. So I've got my lead selected and I want to change how it behaves. Right now, if I play the sample, it'll ring out just all the way through. But if I go into sample mode, I can change that. For instance, I can change it to gated. So the sample will only play when I hold it down like this. I can also set it to loop or to reverse. Wait for it. In this case, I do actually want it to set to be one shot, but I wanted you to know that these options are here. You can also send stuff to a choke group. And if you send something to a choke group, it'll all go just to the one choke group. There's also the option to change from keyboard to slice. I'm going to come back to this because right now I'm just going to leave this in keyboard mode. Let's go back into note mode. You may have already noticed at this point that you can only play one note at a time on any given track. So I can't play like a chord and each note will cut off the previous note. That might feel kind of limiting, like you're going to start to fill up your track count pretty quickly until you learn about how sample flip works. And sample flip is the ability that any circuit has to switch between multiple samples on one track. So for instance, I can play in a part switching between multiple sounds and it will record those switches. So for instance, I could have a kick and a snare and even a hi-hat going on one track and then have all my other tracks free for other stuff, which is super nice to have. And there are multiple ways to record or program notes in. So before I do that, let me set my tempo. In this case, I can either go to the tempo button and uh, select it with a numerical readout. I've also got access to my swing here with this other knob, but I'm gonna get out of that and I'm gonna tap out my tempo instead. So just shift and then shift to get to my click. Seems about right. And I can adjust it from there. So let's play in a kick part. I can play it in just in the sample select window, or I can play it in in the drum pads. So let me show you recording from the drum pads real quick. I'm going to hit record and then hit play whenever I'm ready to go. Let 
Let me get rid of that click. And notice the playhead moving through. In this case, this is the kick track. And if I want to add another kick, I can just program that in. So each of these steps correlates to a spot in time. So if I want, I can just do this. And if I want to get rid of notes, I can just press it again, and that'll remove that note. I want to program another hi-hat in there. So when you have notes that are lit up cyan like this, that means that there's a note living on that step, as it's called. And if I change the sample, it'll change what sample that any of those cyan steps are playing. So watch this. It just plays whichever sample is active. But let's say I want to force it to be a certain sample no matter what. I can do that either by recording my part just directly from the selection window, so like this. And these light up the purple lavender color. I can also hold down a sample and then assign it to a step that way. And once again, I can clear these. And all of this note data gets stored in a pattern. So I've gone to my patterns window here and I've got all my patterns for track one and there are four more if I go down a page, track two, track three, track four, and so on. And it's all color coded, which is super nice. And I can launch these whenever I want. So let's say this pattern, I'm gonna program in a little four on the floor kick pattern. Now I can switch between them. I can even tell this to be a different sample. I can switch between them. And you'll notice that each pattern by default is only one bar long, but we can change this. This button right here will grow your pattern to two bars, AKA 32 steps. So let me click that. And now I've got a whole extra window that I can enter notes into. And if I want to get back to the first part of the pattern, I've got that there. I'm gonna switch back and forth and you'll notice the blue is correlated with the first half of a pattern the orange is correlated with the second half of a pattern. So I can record into that, but sometimes two bars still isn't enough. So there are a couple of things I can do. Either I can go into my pattern settings and slow down the pattern. So this would take it say to half speed, and this would take it to be quarter speed. And there's some triplet stuff in here as well. And I can even speed up a pattern to double speed, for instance, if I want to. That's one way that you can get longer patterns, which is especially helpful if you want notes to be held down for a really long time. Or if I want my patterns to stay normal speed, I can chain multiple patterns together. And in order to do that, you just hold down the first pattern you want to chain together. And then while still holding it, select the last one. And when this pattern ends, it'll just go directly to this next one and to the next one and to the next one. And you can record into patterns while they're chained together. And this is how you're gonna get longer musical sections. I can also chain together all eight, hold down this, go down, boom. And then I can get out of that chain of patterns whenever I want to. I'm gonna clear all of these. So hold down clear and just select one because I want them to all be of equal length. And then I'm just gonna chain two together and record a proper kick part. Good enough for now. I can also duplicate patterns. So let me double check which thing has my hi-hat. It's track three. Just gonna hold down duplicate, select this, and then select where I want the duplicate to live. And now I can say program in a faster hi-hat. So let me go into this fast hi-hat pattern because there's a couple of things that I can change about how these notes behave that I wanna show you next. First of all, there's velocity and that controls how hard a note hits. So this is still my sequencer. So this is my first note, this is second, so on and so forth. So let's say I want every other note to hit kind of softly. So here's the first note that can hit as hard as I want it to. Maybe let's just have that hit as hard as possible. And this should be only half that. This should hit really hard, this should be half that so on and so forth. You've got a lot of control over just how hard a note hits. And you can even hear that when you just select the step, you can hear how hard it's hitting. You can also duplicate individual notes. So I wanna duplicate this one, I'll duplicate it down to here, duplicate the soft one, keep going with that. And now I've got my alternating hi-hat. And of course I can still switch out which sample that is if I want to. And if I go back and check velocity, 
that velocity has still stayed there and I can change it once again, if I want to, you've got a lot of flexibility uh, with how that stuff works. I should also mention that if you want your playing to feel super consistent, you can hit shift and that will set your velocity to fixed when you play stuff so that every note you play, no matter how hard you hit a pad will play in at exactly the same velocity. I can also control my gate, which is how long a note holds down. So let me record in a bass line, first of all, and then I'll show you how that works. So I've got this bass here. Real quick, I'm going to go into sample mode and set it to gated. So it'll hold down as long as I hold it down. So now I can go into note. Try to play in some sort of bass line. So let me chain some patterns together and just go for it. You notice I let that note go just a little bit sooner than I wanted to. So let's jump into gate next. And also notice when I'm in note mode that isn't expanded, I've still got my sequencer here and I can like get rid of that note. I can hold down a keyboard note to punch it in there. In this case, I want it to be uh, that C. So I want this note to go all the way until the next note hits. So I'm going to go into gate and this controls how long the note rings out. So I select my note and then I can select how long it lasts. In this case, I actually do want to set this to uh, one shot instead of gated, but I just wanted to use that as an opportunity to show you how that works. I also want to sidechain my bass to the kick. So in order to get to that, let's go to effects and then hit it again to get to sidechain or hit shift and then this button and I'm greeted with the sidechain window. Now by default, it'll pull up two tracks and one of those tracks is the track that I was already on. So in this case, track four is that purple color. This is track four right here. This controls which thing triggers the sidechain. I want my kick to trigger the sidechain and the kick is living on track one. So this is correct, this is what I want. And then this controls how intense the sidechain is. So watch this. And if I want to add sidechain to a different track, I can page up and down. So that's my hi-hat track. That does not particularly good, so we're not going to keep that, but you get the idea. And you've also got effects on a sound by sound basis. So let me go back to my bass track. For one thing, I've got tune. And this will take the entire sound and bump it up or down in pitch. If you just twirl the note without doing anything else, it'll go by 20 cents, I believe, which I think is a fifth of a semitone. Or if you hold down shift, it'll go by one semitone each way. I want to leave it at its original position for now. There's also stuff like start, which will control when the note starts. We'll come back to this. And then length controls how long the note uh, rings out. Slope controls... Uh, how that note behaves once it is ringing out. So if I turn this to the left, it shortens the note and it has that steep kind of uh, fade out. If I go the other way, to the right, it has that fade in. At this point, I want it to be fairly neutral. And my favorite, distortion. And filtering, cut some lows. Cut some highs and resonance, which is pretty cool. I'll turn that back down for now. So right now we've got ourselves uh, a basic drum part and a bass line. The other thing hiding in here is micro step. And this is how you get stuff like hi-hat rolls. So let me show you that next. I've got this other hi-hat pulled up here. And you see how both of these can live on the same track as long as they're not playing at the same time. Right now, what I want is to get to micro step. So I'm going to hit this twice. Select this step. And this is micro steps. So if I hold down all of these, probably a bit much. And you don't have to have multiple micro steps on one step either. I could just have one random step. step. 
And this is how uh, the circuit deals with unquantized stuff too. If I hit shift and then record, it'll turn off input quantization. So I can just record something and it'll reproduce it exactly as I played it without correcting the timing. And if you want to go in and tweak the timing ever so slightly, you want to go into the micro steps and nudge stuff forward or backwards. In this case, I do want that hi-hat roll. I also want to record in some automation so that the hi-hat roll is fairly low pitched and then that open hi-hat isn't. In order to do that, I'm gonna hit record and then I just have to twiddle a knob while it plays like this. And it'll record that movement. That doesn't sound that good, but hopefully you get the idea. I kinda wanna switch out. Uh, that's better. You can also do this with stuff like uh, your mix. So let me go to the mixer window next. It's pretty simple in terms of how it's set up. Each of these knobs controls the volume of a track. And then if I go down a page, you have access to panning as well. Set that back to neutral. So let me just make some adjustments. And in this case, I want to automate the panning of my hi-hats, which is like the secret for getting really good kind of dark trap hi-hats. So in this case, I'm going to hold down record and then move the panning knob left to right. From here, let's go ahead and record in a melody part. So once again, let me chain four patterns together, select the track. Get some reverb. Some delay. By the way, I forgot to mention that each of these are different settings for your reverb and delay. This one is a nice uh, ping-ponging delay that bounces back and forth in your ears that I really like. Go back up to my mixer, turn that down. Side chain that a bit. And going back to Mixer for a second, let me hit Shift and hit Mixer. And now I've got all these grid effects to work with. And all of these effects are color coded by type. The other thing living within Mixer is scenes. So scenes are collections of patterns or pattern chains, and you can switch between those and even chain them together to create bigger sections of your song. So I've already got this combination of patterns selected, and I've got some stuff chained together, and I've got the combination that I like for this section of a song. So I'm gonna go to Mixer, and this is where all my scenes live. So to save one, I hit Shift, these all turn gold, and I just select where I want this scene to live. So now, if I select a different scene, just a default one, it selects the default combination of patterns. And then if I go to uh, the scene that we saved, that's all exactly as I left it. And you can even chain scenes together to create a larger arrangement. You can duplicate them, all that kind of stuff. You can also switch between entire projects, which is super nice. So check this out. And you can even change the tempo of a song while it's playing. And then if you switch to a project while everything is playing, uh, that new project will take on that new tempo. What this means is that you can use switching between projects to transition between different songs at different tempos and build up an entire set, which is awesome. Up next, let's get into sample chopping. And sample chopping on here is actually super straightforward. So I've got the stock pack pulled up here. I'm gonna choose. A sample. So first of all, I need to go to sample mode and change to slice. And these will allow me to select how many slices uh, I'll be given. So this is 16, this is eight, and this is four. I'm gonna leave it on 16 for now. And then I'm going to go into note. And from here, by default, I have 16 even chops to work with. But you are not restricted to that, because if I click this again, I am greeted with these pads and blank pads here, and I can actually go ahead and set my chop points manually just by pressing 
the different pads to assign a new chop to each pad in order. So let me actually show you that. I'm gonna start the process by just hitting the first pad and then I'm just gonna run through the entire sample. And I can change where this stuff is set after the fact as well using start and length. Same deal with length. And of course I can tune the entire thing as well. So I'm just gonna turn this all the way down in pitch to give me a bit more to work with. See, that's too much. See, this needs to ring out longer. And you'll notice that uh, the speed changes with pitch. And now I can just record that in no problem. So let me set a tempo. Get a click going. Get some drums. And in this case, a little trick I like to use pretty often is to have my kick and snare on the same track. And let me hit shift to turn off quantize. Get rid of the click. Hit a little bit of reverb. And then go to the side chain and side chain this second track, the yellow track, which is the sample track to the kick and snare track. <laughs> That's too much. And I'm well on my way to building up a beat that way. I should mention that the way you chop up a sample is saved within the project, not within the sample. So if I was just to start, let me save this, start a new project and uh, once again, select that same sample. The way that it's chopped is just set back to the default. So if you want to have the same sample chop carry through to multiple projects, you want to just go ahead and save the project where you did the chop to a new slot. I should also mention that you can chop up stuff that you've recorded directly into the circuit. Once again, video on that coming next week. And you can chop up stuff that you've resampled on the circuit. And once again, I'll talk about that in next week's video as well. But finally, let's look at some ways to create some unpredictability or even chaos. So let me just get a kick in here. I'm gonna go ahead and record in uh, just kind of some nonsense. And now let's go into probability. So probability uh, is on a step-by-step -step basis and that'll control how likely it is that that step will trigger. By default, it's set to all the way. So it's 100% likely that that step will in fact trigger, but you can change that. So let's make this like 50% likelihood. Make this super unlikely, super duper unlikely, pretty likely, so on and so forth. And then it'll kind of roll the dice on whether or not to trigger each individual step depending on how likely you've set it to be. So check this out. Obviously that sounds kind of bad because I put absolutely no thought into how that was going to sound, but hopefully you get the idea and you can see how powerful that can be. B. Often I love to put in little fills that can be little bits of ear candy and then put them on super low likelihood. So they'll happen every once in a while, but there's no actual pattern to like, oh, this will come around every four bars. There's a little bit more unpredictability built into that. There's also the mutate function. So let me show you that on a melody because that uh, can be a little more interesting. <laughs> super duper boring and basic. So first of all, mutate is destructive, so that means that once you've done it, you can't undo it. I would recommend duplicating your pattern first. Let's go to this other pattern. I'm gonna hit shift, mutate. That'll take all the steps that you already have in here and then just reshuffle them. That's actually not bad. It's pretty hit or miss. <laughs> See, this one actually could become something. Let me just clear this. It's pretty basic, but hopefully you get the idea. That's definitely worth playing around with. And finally, under pattern settings, which I've showed you briefly before, I showed you uh, how to change the speed of your pattern. You can also do stuff like change the direction of your pattern. So that's playing backwards. Or you can have a ping pong. 
And you can have it choose random steps, which is different than mutate. Because it's truly random every single time. And you can see how it just like jumps around. So you could theoretically use random in conjunction with probability and create some proper unpredictability and chaos. I would use this with caution, but uh, you've got that option there to do something like that regardless of whether it's a good idea. If you're looking for some high quality drum and synth sounds for your circuit rhythm, you might want to check out my video where I showed what my $5 sample pack is capable of. You can click or tap up over here to see that and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's video about loading sounds onto your circuit rhythm. And I'll link that video here if it's already out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.